than all these where he looks more middle aged. Does that make sense? I don't know. Well, you know that also that uh, you know Sean Connery was only let's see, so he was like nine years older than him or something. Uh, let's see. Connery was born in 1930, and he was born in 42, so 12 years. There's literally only a 12-year difference between the two. Yeah, but Harrison Ford close. looks so much younger. But not yeah. e- not even that much. I mean, to the fact That's that, what I'm like, saying. Sean Cro- Connery, like, he did not look his age for so long. Like, like in The Rock, he had completely white beard. Yeah. In this yeah. one, he's got a little, he's still got a bit of black in yeah, it. Yeah, salt and peppery. Right. And Harrison Ford's, like I said, he's more in that middle-aged. You know, he was in his 40s, I think, when they did Which this. Which is movie, also kind of, uh, yeah, and, and kind of ironic, too, that 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 he is known, Sean Connery is known for playing Bond. You know, the biggest, baddest uh, spy, shoot him Most up. Suave. You know, sw- yeah, suave, skilled spy. And then now he's playing in this role where he's an academic that can't even throw a punch in a way. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, it's kind of like they castrated him a little bit, you know, for this film. And, and <laughs> where, where you know, I mean, because, you know, it's, he's James, he's the original James Bond. He's James effing Bond. Yeah. Like, literal the first James Bond ever, <laughs> which is played by Sean Connery. Yeah, I'm so excited to get into this. All right, let's get into it because we got a few things. Uh, getting into this, we, I want to do a couple shout outs first uh, on our Instagram paid, uh, page. Uh, we want to do a shout out to Vernon J. Walker on our uh, Temple of Doom um, Instagram post. Uh, he, he had put that it was a good movie, great movie. We had our hundredth post with uh, Temple of Doom. Wow. So I just wanted to grab, you know, some comments on that and uh, and everything because that's a pretty big <coughs> milestone for mm-hmm. us. So mm-hmm. thanks for everybody sticking with us, with our Instagram crowd and everything. Um, we, we also want to shout out to Ken A510. I don't know if it's Kenna or Ken A, uh, but uh, this person wrote, okay. The Dark Horse of the Indiana Jones movies. Not my favorite, but has a lot of redeeming value and is a standout amongst the film series for several reasons. And I think that's pretty much the consensus we came to in Temple of Doom, right? I mean... And it wasn't it, the best. It but. wasn't the best, but I mean, even for the special effects, were were pretty damn good. Yeah, the uh, green it, screen was only the kind of like uh, it, a little it was, rough, but practical but, 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 effects but and everything. Were that's great. what I love about these things because you almost feel like you're 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 sort of in a history book when you watch these films. You know what I mean? Because it's like it, they they teach you things that they're not true for the mo- most part you know I like mean, in we, filmmaking yes yes but okay. filmmaking but even even as history wise you know what i mean like you do get to see parts of the country and and you know their their idea of what this country looks like and i kind of feel like back when i was a kid that you know like over in 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 uh, Egypt and things like that, and different countries that he was in, you know, I mean, I don't think he was actually in Egypt, right? I get it, but I mean, and looking at different countries, we research these cultures. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, even as a kid, you know, you're looking at the screen and you feel like that's what those parts of the world look like. Yeah, you know, and so as a kid, that was great because you were kind of introduced to something that you're not used to. I mean, we lived up in Maine, you know, when this movie came out, when we when I vastly different than a lot of the world. Right, 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 and vastly different, you know compared to the uh, geography in these films, right. you know, but it was kind of cool because it was like, it was, he was kind of like the James Bond, but the American version in a way. Yeah. Or like James Bond for kids or something. Yeah. And, and I kind of friendly, friendly, friendly movies, friend of me. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, but still I, PG is yeah, still PG, but, but I kind of feel like with it being, you know, in, uh, it, it, it was, it was a James Bond type film. But like, if it was George Lucas's version, it would have been more like James Bond, and the fact that it was more like more Spielberg's, temple. yeah, yeah, and like with Spielberg's vision, because that's what we got. That's the product we got with Spielberg's ver- vision. You know, we got the little bit more uh, smarter version of James Bond in in this movie you're talking about, yeah, in the Indiana Jones movies. Oh, okay, and, and okay, I got. That's you. what I'm saying. It's more more of like a. Uh, 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 a smarter version of of James. Uh, the Ken A was making a point. It's a dark horse at the end of Jan and June's movies. We Correct. completely agree. Yep, the, it was. It's definitely the one off because Crude Last Crusade and Raiders are pretty similar, especially with their villains and everything. My take on it in this one, and you'll, which you'll hear in a minute, is going to be that this was like the Evil Dead Two, where it was like you're kind of telling the same thing, but you're just doing it better now. You got a little bit more money, you can do a little bit better of a job and special you, effects. And, and you know what's that. great about this movie as well? What? 
fact that John Ray Ice Davies is back. He's back. We got Sala. He's back. I like and Sala. And this is unfortunately, this is why I chose Sala. This is this is I wanted to get through this film to mention. This is why I chose Sala as being the best sidekick for and helpful sidekick for the simple reason he's in here twice. Now, if you count the Crystal Skull and Marion, okay, she was in both. Yeah, right. But you can't really count the Crystal Skull, skull originally part why of these. Why did he bring back Sala and Crystal Skull? Anyways, all right, so let me... Gandalf. So we have a couple of things to do before we get into the movie proper. We, we got a Twitter poll that we got to go over. We got our, our top uh, five favorite Sean Connery roles that we want to do. And uh, we got some apologies to make. So let's go ahead and make our apology. Okay. <laughs> Um, so on our Raiders, no, it was our temple. No, it was our Raiders, our Raiders episode. Do you remember who we said voiced the monkey? Seth Rogen. <laughs> Seth Rogen. <laughs> it's kind of close close to his laugh yeah right? but you should definitely cut, uh, cut out his laughing. laugh <laughs> um so we said frank welker who was a, a huge voice actor from the 80s animated shows right 90s correct different things we've done but um, I ought to also mention that uh, that I thought he did the voice for uh, Optimus Prime. Correct. And uh, obviously that was Peter Cullen who actually did the voice for Optimus Prime in the movies as well. Ed, Edward's dad, right? Yes, okay. Edward's dad, Mr. Cullen. Yes. <laughs> Peter Cullen. Uh, but yeah, he, he, he did the voice. He actually did the voice in the movies, whereas they didn't bring Frank Welker back because they wanted more intimidating voice in the live action movie, right? So they brought back Agent Smith. What's yeah. his name? Hugo Weaving. Yeah, Hugo. It. it does kind of sound a little German. Mr. Hugo. Yeah, yeah, Hugo is definitely. But um, So anyways, that's our apology to P uh, Peter Cullen. Great voice P actor. Pimps and hoes. That's, that's our apology. <laughs> For pimps and hoes. Now, he, uh, he gave, a, gave a great performance. He's done many voices Peter Cullen has. And so that's our bad on that. So we apologize, Mr. Cullen. Um, this is our last LaBuffless movie, as you coin. Yes. We, we call these the Bu La Buffless Trilogy, mm -hmm. right? Yes. But uh, let, let me go over this uh, t Twitter poll okay. for our last La Buffless movie, because okay. the La Buffless Trilogy, as we've mentioned before, uh, is something, a term that Andrew came up with uh, to describe this orig tridge, mm -hmm. the original trilogy um, of mo uh, Indiana Jones movies that does not have Shia LaBeouf in it. Um, real quick, we did the uh, the Twitter poll on Twitter. Is that where that happened? Yes, okay. yes. The Twitter poll That's it good. was actually conducted on Twitter. Is, uh, it, is it called enough. Twitter anymore? Is it the Elon Musk uh, app? <laughs> no, the, what you, the Elon Musk project. The, Do the Dozier. EM project. It's called Dozier now. Not Twitter, but Dozier. The Elon equals Musk squared project. Yes, the Dozier. <laughs> Um, okay, so on Twitter, we asked, uh, we did a poll, and we asked, what is your favorite indie movie of the original trilogy? And funny enough, as much as the uh, Raiders is iconic, mm -hmm. the Twitterverse agrees with you. Mm -hmm. Because they put The Last Crusade in first place at 45% of the, the poll. Uh, Temple of Doom was second place with 33% of the vote. And Raiders was third place with twenty two, only twenty two percent of the I vote. I agree with that because I've uh, I've said after this first it time watching that, money to that pay people to vote on that, by the way. <laughs> I said that Raiders and Temple were were even and tied. Right? I was like, oh, those are probably just as good as each other. Raiders for how iconic it is. Right. Temple, I think actually is actually made better, even though the special effects are a little off. Right. I think it's actually made better. Raiders was a very they were still like kind of experimenting with how they wanted the movie to go. By the time they got to Last Crusade, they had it down by the beach. You okay. know? Apparently, the the Twitter the Tweety poll is not agreeing with you on. Yeah, this but they agreed with you. They agree that maybe Raiders lost something. Maybe it was because it was original, and people have just seen it yeah. so many times. So, anyways, that's that's the Twitter poll. Uh, you guys join us on Twitter more. We're going to try to start doing a little bit more polls so we can announce them here on the uh, on the show to get 
uh, you know you guys know what we think we want to we want to tell everybody what you guys think as well so um favorite sean connery roles are you ready this is so easy like like i could interchange shout time i could interchange probably like three or four times like he has so many great films that like I, I went over it. I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna pull up the list. I'm gonna pull up the list of all the movies he's done. I'm gonna be like, I know what's gonna be my top three. Obviously. Okay, I was gonna say because that's but, weird because when I look through, I actually found that there's a lot of Sean Connery roles I have not seen. There is a ton that I've seen and I loved ninety percent of. But them. I was able to pretty easily get a top five done. So, okay. all right. So you're number five. We're gonna do what we always do and what the general world and consensus does, and that is number five. What is your hmm. what is your number five pick I for your top five Sean Connery roles? My number five will be all the James Bond films. Oh, you're gonna cheat. Uh, I, no, actually, that's actually not cheating if I'm saying a whole group. Oh, uh, if we're talking cheating. about his roles instead of his movies. Okay, you're yeah. right. You're right. Yeah. So I uh, here's the thing. I don't have any James Bond roles on here. And here's the thing. Another thing. I don't watch James Bond movies. I, I think I've, I don't mind I've seen like 10, 15 minutes of the Sean Connery one. Don't remember which one it was. I was really young when I saw it. But you know what's the only other one that I've seen after that? Hmm. Goldeneye. Really, I saw Pierce Brosnan's Goldeneye. Um, I've seen a couple of um, who's the new guy, Daniel Craig. Daniel Craig. I've seen uh, what was it? I've seen uh, Casino Royale, which I think is great. I, that's my favorite. But I've only seen like a few of these things, so right. I think Casino Royale is my favorite. But um, and I saw the one that was right after. I don't even know what it was called, but. Yeah, so I can't really talk much about James Bond movies. So, I mean, I know he was the first James Bond. Yes. And another thing that I... A lot I, of people don't realize that. They they feel like... Uh, what's his face? Not... Um, Roger Moore? Yeah, they feel like Roger Moore was... And I have to tell people, I said, no, the very first James Bond was uh, Sean Connery. Yeah, Dr. Now, no, he left. Dr. No was the very first James Bond yeah, movie. Yeah, he, he left and then came back because Roger Moore took over That's and right. then he took back, I believe. He came back for one yeah. one time, one yeah. or two maybe. But um, I know that Ian Fleming wrote these novels um, and he Sir actually... Christopher... He was actually a step-cousin to Sir Christopher Lee and that's who he had based uh, Bond off of. Anybody that knows about Christopher Lee who played Dracula, he played... Um, Count Dooku. Count Dooku in the Star Wars movies. That many other more, movies. I, I know Very he's iconic. such a great <clears throat> actor. I just said that one because that was like a really well-known character. Yeah, right but I mean, this guy, he that's who James Bond is based off of, is Christopher Lee. You know, he saw the last public execution in France by a guillotine. You know, he has... It's, uh, he was in the, the British Secret Service back when it was called SAS, I think, or something. But, like, he is, his, some of his missions are still classified to this day. I mean, he did some crazy yeah. stuff. And he's actually blood-related to Charlemagne. Yeah. And yeah. he has a heavy metal band, or he had a heavy metal band called Charlemagne. This dude's le lived a crazy life, and if we ever do an actor's profile, he's got to be one of the first that we sure. do. You know, we, we talked about Denzel and a couple others, but, I mean, we got to talk about this guy. Anyways. My number five is Last Crusade. Uh, this is actually, obviously, you know, obviously the only role that Sean Connery is in in an Indiana Jones movie. Uh, but it's also one of my first exposures to Sean Connery as an actor and as the person and everything. Great job. We're about to talk about it, though. So what's your number four? My number four probably would be First Night. Okay. That's the one with Richard Gere, right? Yes. Was there a dragon in that or no? No, you're thinking of Dragonheart. Dragonheart, that's it. He was the voice or something, right? Correct. So what was First Night about? Do you remember? Uh, King Arthur. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was actually King Arthur. So He was or Richard Gere was? No, he was. Oh, okay. Uh, King, Richard Gere was uh, Lancelot. Lancelot. And so there there was that thing and with- there was Guinevere. Guinevere and Same Lancelot. Same thing with the Clivo and Keira yeah, Knightley movie. Yeah, yeah, but it was and a lot Ian more- Griffold. It was a lot more darker and like more serious tone than than the King Arthur Darkly. film. Yeah, but it was uh, yeah because if you know the history of it, you know Lancelot and Guinevere did have a thing. That's what I hear, and that's what the King Arthur movie with Clive Owen and Keira Knightley and Ian Gruffold did. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's what they talked about. My number four was Highlander. <clears throat> I'm sure you have that higher. Yes, because I know that when we were younger. I don't think I ever knew a bigger Highlander fan than you. Oh, absolutely. Not that I knew a bunch of Highlander fans or anything, but I just remember you being a huge fan and you actually getting me into it. 
And I wish they would have done something like that. Or like right now, if they came out with a Netflix show, Highlander. They, they are. Oh, are they? Henry okay. Cat Cavill is playing Highlander. Well, I don't know these Sorry. things. <laughs> this is these are the I know, times you got to tell me. I'm excited about this. Yes. I know, but that's when you go. Oh well, guess what? Guess what? What? Henry Cavill is playing Highlander. No, <laughs> correct. <laughs> I thought he was. They were talking about him playing either uh, Captain Britain or uh, Hercules in Marvel. One of those two characters, either Hercules or Hercules, Captain Britain. Hercules, okay. Captain Marvel. I mean, no, he, Captain he, Britain. I mean, crap, Captain Captain. Captain, Captain Britain. Britain uh, I actually like Captain Britain, but he's really there's not a lot to him. You know, really, he's not yeah. a very. Uh, he was more just character. kind of a funny thing to copy Captain Marvel. Yeah, or I mean, Captain in America, his sister is probably more famous than he is, anyways. Hmm. Like, uh, like Betty, what's her name? Um, That's She his Hulk. Sister. Well, Betty, no, I'm talking about She Hulk. Psylocke is his sister. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, She Hulk is obviously bigger than Hulk in the comics. Which is why MCU is going the way they're going, right? Yeah, uh, they canceled uh, Hulk, and now we got She-Hulk, which is going to be way better for us for these stories, right? Yeah. What's your what? number three? Oh, what, real quick, Highlander. What about Highlander? I mean, uh, what can we say about Highlander? If you haven't seen it, it's uh, it's about a race of people that uh, are immortal. And Here we are, born to be kings. We're the Show. Love the show. I, tried, I, I was watching it the other day, and I'm like, you know what? Everything's outdated, but I still love it. It took me entirely too long in my childhood to realize that was clear yeah, as well. Yeah, and, and a lot of people don't realize, too, is that he was in the films, too. Adri- Adrian. Uh, Whoever the guy was. Adrian something. L- yeah, yeah Lowell Moss or whatever it was to... Uh, the, the the OG Highlander that yes. was trained by Sean Connery, who also played Raiden in Mortal Kombat. Yes. Yeah. Um, no, but I was actually talking about he, that was his cousin, uh, McLeod. It was uh, yeah, the McLeod. Uh, yeah, yeah. But the but the one in the TV show was the cousin. But man, there was like six seasons. Was it I think, Connor in the show. or was it Connor? Is the original? Okay, Connor McLeod. Okay, because he said Connor, Connor, Connor. And Sean Connery. Yeah, Christopher Lambert, right? Yeah. And he played Raiden in uh, the original Mortal Kombat But it, pretty much, well, it, anybody that one. knows him is knows him. I mean, they know him as Highlander. But yeah, the, I, I believe Henry Cavill is playing the next Highlander, if I'm not mistaken. Is he playing like a, a whole different person, or is he going to play a McLeod family? Um, It doesn't matter if you don't know. We'll figure yeah, it out or whatever. We'll, we'll but figure it out. What's your whatever. number three? Um, what was I gonna say? You said you know your top three. Yeah, The Rock probably. Yeah, The Rock. Boom, The Rock. I got it. Number three, keeping nice. our tradition alive. Yeah, nice. I also have The Rock. Uh, he played uh, a character in that where um, he had escaped from Alcatraz before back in the day, and he was caught. He was part of Brit- British Secret Service in that movie, and he was imprisoned. Uh, imprisoned him in prison. I am taking them to imprison them. In prison. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways, he uh, he was the only one one that knew how to escape from the Rock, and you know, of course, if you know the Rock, you know, uh, a group of uh, former soldiers uh, take over Alcatraz and take a bunch of um, uh, what do you want to call it? What are they called? Felons? No, uh, uh, tourist. Yeah, they take a bunch of tourists uh, hostage, and uh, and you know, with some nerve gas, they could destroy the whole city. Anyways, great movie. Nicholas Cage, one of Nicholas Cage's best as well. Correct. I uh, have it on my number three because he's just so awesome. Because he's so badass, and Nicholas Cage isn't, and then Nicholas Cage tries to tries to copy that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> His name is John something in the movie. I can't remember. John Connor. No. Definitely not. What's your number two? Uh, Last Crusade. Oh, okay. Uh, we're about to get into that. I have The Untouchables. Uh, that would be an honorable mention for me. Yeah, I have The Untouchables. I mean, obviously, that's Kevin um, Costner's movie, but... Oh, it's, it's a phenomenal movie. But his partnership is Elliot Ness with Sean Connery's partner, and how Sean Connery's uh, character kind of was the brains and kind of, well, this is what how we should do it. And then, of course, his tragic... Uh, fate at the end and everything. He just, yeah, he did. A, he did just did a very, very good job in that movie. It's one of his most most iconic roles. I think almost as iconic as the one that I have in my number one. What's your number is it, one? 
Is it Hunt for Red October? That's not my number one. What's your number one? Highlander. Highlander. Okay. Yeah. Ramirez. We already, he played Ramirez, bro. Ramirez. Yeah. Right. We already talked about the Highlander. Um, my number one is Hunt for Red October. I didn't see that until I was an adult, and actually, I didn't even see that until about five, ten years ago. And I was blown away by the cinematography. I was blown away by um, Sean Connery's acting. Um, Alec Baldwin was, eh, he was just a whatever in that movie. You know, the movie kind of just happened to his character. So you couldn't say much about that. But anyways, another little list to get through. Uh, glad we had a movie like this to introduce uh, And the late, Sean great, Connery. late, great Sean Connery. I mean, he, he only died, what, like two years ago. So Not I too mean, long ago. He spent a long time retired from acting. Probably a good thing because of everything that's going on right now he is a definitely a guy from another time you can find interviews about there about him saying he thinks it's okay to if a female is getting out of line to give her a little smack stuff like that i mean this is the way the guy used to talk so definitely came from a different era and all that not that we're excusing the era or anything or the person or anything like that but um uh definitely wouldn't have survived in today's hollywood at all or at least the Hollywood in the last five, ten years or so. Correct. So, um, obviously, we find out that Indiana Jones, his real name isn't Indiana. His real name is Henry, Henry Henry Jones the second. Junior. Yeah, Junior. Junior. Or, or second. Uh, and that they named the dog Indiana. And Indi- I love that dog. Yeah, Henry Jones the second liked that liked that dog and that name so much that he. I, I, I kind of like it because we do get a lot of background on Indiana Jones that we probably should have had earlier on, like in, you know, uh, Last Ark or even Temple. I mean, have some sort of uh, real background on him, but we get so much background on his character on. Henry it, on on or Indiana, whatever you want to call yeah. it. Yeah, you know. But I mean, you, you do get a lot of background, and and you know, I mean, because. In the other two movies, you don't really... You're going back to the roots, right? Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. That's what the third definitely. person of the third trilogy, the third Always. in a trilogy is supposed Always. to go do. It's go back to Always. the beginning. Especially if it's done by George <laughs> Lucas or Steven Spielberg. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> screamed at it that way. I mean, whenever you have trilogies, it always tries to like go back to the very beginning and and, and try to suss yeah. things out. But you know where you know where that that defies that logic. You know what genre that defies? Uh-huh. I believe science fiction, because you look at like the movies, the Aliens movies, right? They are constantly going back to the original. Like almost every single film. Same thing with the Predator. It's it's almost always the same basis. They're always like going they're back. To copy it. Yeah, but but like oh, it's almost like it's the same movie in a way. You know what I mean? Like they're always trying to go back to the roots, and they they retcon it every single film. Yeah, they're trying to capture the first one. Or Correct. Whatever. But I mean, I'm talking with this one. The story actually goes back to what is the character's origins or whatever. But yeah, right. But you what know, I'm saying, science, science fiction, science fiction doesn't, doesn't really follow. Do that. Science fiction doesn't follow a lot of rules, especially with time travel things do you like think that. That we've moved from archaeology in the first trilogy. To now science fiction, the second one, because the first one of this new trilogy, four, five, and yeah. six of Indiana yeah. Jones, we've already dealt with aliens. Archaeology. No, no, look, look, it's it's archaeology. Then you're going to, uh, what was the second one you said? Uh, well, I'm, I, no, I'm saying that archaeology is the first trilogy. One, two, or uh, Temple, Raiders Temple and Last Crusade. Now this new one, because we've already got Kingdom of Crystal Skull and that had aliens, do you think Part 5 is going to no. follow that along no. and do more science fiction? And I have to disagree with you on the way that you're explaining those because I feel like, okay, so like the first one's archaeology, right? Well, no, I, what I, I just meant that these weren't science fiction movies. And now, f- for some reason, in Part 4, we got a science fiction movie. In a way, it is, because think about it like this way, right? The first one's archaeology, second one's anthropology. Okay, third one is religion. Fourth one is, uh, like, science fiction. Right. Straight up science fiction. So we don't know with this fifth one which way that one's going. So you don't think you don't see it's it a form as, of science as more yeah. of uh, uh, breaking it up into this trilogy no. versus the newer no. trilogy. I think they're separate. You think every movie is separate? Correct. Okay. Yeah, my my personal that. opinion, you know. <clears throat> yeah, I could see that. I could see that. I could see that most of this was still about archaeology. I think the Raiders put the the heavy you know 
you know, the work into it. Yeah. You know, he's got to go to the different locations, whereas Tempo was just surviving a cult. Last year, said he was just trying to find his dad. There's also always a little bit of religion in every single film, too. Yeah, I mean, depending on what cultures you're going through. Yeah, you know, like every Aztecs in the, in the fourth one. Yeah. Uh, you know, Even modern day culture has, like, uh, has science yeah. as its religion. And don't say that science isn't a religion. <laughs> right. And, and H- Hinduism uh, for the second one, in a sense, you know. And then the first one was we get back to Christianity. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you had mentioned in our Temple of Dune episode that Indy's dad was constantly trying to teach him a lesson when they were in a bad situation. Actually. And basically I'm didn't sorry. act right. Uh, you know, you, you're talking about how he's always trying to teach him a lesson when it wasn't the time to teach him a lesson. But I think this movie, and I'll let you say what you're going to yeah, say, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I think, I'm breaking it down a little bit more. Okay. Because I think that this movie explains that. By saying that Henry isn't a fieldwork guy. He is a classic, and even Indy mentions it in there. He is not a fieldwork guy. He is a classroom books guy. What is he doing? You know, that's whenever Indy's dad went missing or whatever. Correct. And they were searching his house. He's like, he's not a fieldwork guy. He's an academic. He's a books guy and everything. So I think it's showing that he's not used to being out. So he's going to constantly criticize Indy, right? Because that's the the academic part of it. Because he feels like Indy should be academic. Right. And and academics, they critique things as well. So he's going to critique Indy as well. But he doesn't understand that this is not the time for that and that we're there we're, we're about to get our asses shot yeah. and everything so i think that that explains like you were like you know he was always trying to teach him a lesson but i think that was part of the humor for it the comedy for the two of them is that is that uh henry is not used to being out in the field and and you even see whenever and he just straight up shoots people and kills them and they leave and he's like you shot them and like he, and he's already walked off by now and henry's just still standing he's like i can't believe you shot them I can't believe what you just did. Something like that, you know. So he's not used to what Indy's doing. I think that, you know, this movie just shows his his ineptitude about how to act when you're. Well, I feel like he he shows him, teaches him a lesson all the way to the end. Like even at the end, you know, he's like kind of teaching him a lesson. You know, uh, the last credits, you know, whatnot, and then you get Marcus, and and that's another character that you're not that doesn't belong in the field either. You know, Marcus, Marcus and Henry do not belong in the field whatsoever, you know, and where Indy, obviously, that's his, that's his nature. I mean, when you you see the two of them in the tank doing their stupid, stupid handshake, (laughs) you can tell these people don't need to be out in the field. (laughs) Correct. But then, but then you see (laughs) in the tank as, as hostages. Yeah. But then you see Indy in the classroom and he's very quite uncomfortable. I mean, yeah, it doesn't help with that people write things on their eyelids, you know, but but it's like he's very uncomfortable there, but when he's out in the field, that's his comfort zone where Henry and Marcus their comfort zone is in the classroom and not out in the field and they seem so out of place and I think I think um you know, Sean Connery um did such a Sean Connery and uh Denholm Elliott, Elliot. you know, they both did such a wonderful job at at being so awkward. You know what I mean? Because like Sean Connery, you're not used to him seeing being an awkward, awkward character in a yeah, film. Yeah, he's very uh, confident and he's a ladies' yes. man and all that. Yeah, so, and that's what they were worried about bringing him into this film. Is that okay? You have these two confident guys. People are going to come to see Sean Connery yeah. for that guy, which is so great. What Sean Connery was able to do with this because that's all he played. Yeah, was the confident man. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I could see that, you know, going to the uh, going through to the end of this, um, but that takes a lot for a kid, for an actor to be able to do that to switch like that, you know, like yeah. I mean either that or he was just like he's naturally like this maybe, and that he plays that type of character on 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 film, yeah, <laughs> you know, like he's not really the. Uh, suave type person i can't say that you can't you can't say that about sean connery i mean he is but i i think it's interesting too because we see that like he doesn't want to be in the classroom and he doesn't he would rather be out whereas henry would like kind of dips his toe into the field work and everything but would much rather be in a uh, library studying or whatever uh and i think that we've talked about how indy is a uh archaeologist and an academic before he is an adventurer so I think he enjoys that stuff, but he feels more at home when he's in the thick of it. You yeah. know, that's when he that's when he really comes alive. That's when he is at his best. It's just when he's in the thick of it. Although he prefers to, you know, he prefers the academic side of it and the knowledge part of it. 
he doesn't like sitting in a classroom library yeah. and reading about it. He yeah. wants to be out there. He's reading about other people finding it or right. other people leaving it right. or other people losing it. He's not out there actually doing something about it. And while he likes the science behind it more, he would rather be out there doing doing yeah. the field work. Now, do you feel like, like these movies, you know, now we're in the third one, that they got a little bit improbable? like a little bit more ridiculous as far as some of the things that were happening in the film. Like, for instance... After we saw the Raiders box open up and d- d- just extinguish yeah, everybody to ashes. That's like the weirdest part of the whole mo- movie, really, right? You know, and then... And then well, you got the temple, you got pulling out well, the heart. And I was and about the, to get to that. Yeah, the, yeah. pulling out the heart, that the guy's that still alive when you do it. And then the rocks burning through the bag as they yeah. fall. And, and but, but, I mean, in the long run, like... This one just got a little bit ridiculous with some of it. You know what I mean? Like, I thought this was like, like more of the most throw, rounded besides th- the grail. You know, they they threw a they threw a match in the water in the sewer, right? But remember what they said that was in the water. Yeah, but like a, a match would have just went out as soon as you threw it in the. And you, if, it, even if it was petroleum or anything, but I mean, I'm sure the fumes were standing at least this tall off of the off of the, the liquid because yeah, it's not the liquid that burns; it's the fumes, as as Raylan yeah, but, would but, say. But wouldn't they get burnt too? Oh, they would. I mean, that's one of the things I was going to make a point of is he just put through this little hole a match. I'm like. You know that would blow the other way too, right? Yeah. And these guys would get. You're talking yeah. about the people that are uh-huh. protecting the holy grail, uh-huh. right? Yeah, yeah. I thought that same too. Like, I think it would light because, I mean, you have how much of those fumes are coming off of that water. If if Finney could smell it uh-huh. already, then the fumes were coming well off of the water, and so it would probably would light. But <laughs> that guy would have gotten blown up just as much as they would, yeah, and probably even more so because at least they had some time to get away or or, hide. or like when we get to the beginning of the movie, right? Where, you know, we're, we're in the scene. I'm not saying the younger scene, because we have, we have the late great also uh, River Phoenix playing right. a young indie who, who uh, Harrison Ford actually, uh, he uh, elected him to be in this Yeah, because he was in, play the, his in uh, Mosquito Coast, yes. which Mosquito Coast is one of Harrison Ford. I think it's called Mosquito Coast. Mosquito something. Yeah. I pretty hate, sure it's mosquitoes. Mosquito Coast, but he's actually said, come out and said that that's his favorite movie that he's ever done. Harrison Ford is Mosquito Coast. You know, you would think that he Mosquito, would say something whatever. like American Graffiti, though. Like, because I kind of feel like that would have been a blast for being such, you know, his early on film. He didn't really care you know, much about it back then, though. Yeah. You know, that was still when he was doing his carpentry, and, you know, he wasn't really, you know, getting into the acting. He was kind of, yeah. like, interested in it, but, you know, he was kind of taking roles as he could get it while he was building sets and everything, right, right. you know. Well, anyways, like, you know, so, so Patriot we, Games, yeah. uh, uh, yeah. The Fugitive, stuff right. like that mm-hmm. would have, would I imagine, would be his favorite or whatever. But I don't know what he liked about that just because it was a certain production. I would say Indian because, I mean, you know, Indiana Jones movies, he did a lot of stunts. And this, even the stuntmen had to go to him and say, hey, let me do some work here. You know what I mean? They said even the set, uh, the famous stuntmen that uh, played him on the uh, in the films that barely worked because uh, Harrison did all his stunts. Yeah. But even said, he said man if that guy wasn't an actor he'd be a great uh stuntman Stunt man, yeah. yeah and and but you know you get into that part right where you know he's doing a lot of his own stunts right and you know we, we get started we you know the beginning of this movie anyways you know you, you open up with with river phoenix playing a uh, young indie and this guy that you know the, his friend that happens to look like a, a Norman. Are Rockwell we getting in the painting. movie right now? Yes, we are. I'll try well, to circle back. Well, you get into the you get into the film right, and it opens up where you got you got young River Phoenix as a young indie, as a young Harrison Ford, and then you have a kid that that looks like he's from a Norman uh, Rockwell painting. Yeah, it was well. I mean, the whole scout troop does. Yes, but yes. wasn't wasn't. There an Indiana Jones Young Adventure, yes, yes, something it was a TV like that. Show. Who would, who was it's a mini series? Uh, Do you remember who it was? I don't. I don't. I don't either. But it was a, it was a mini series that really it was kind of like like uh, George Lucas's version, it was Steven Spielberg's version 
of George Lucas's version of the Ewok TV show. And you know, you know, nowadays <laughs> you know? when you say something's going to TV or a yeah, show or something, yeah. you get excited, right? Yeah, well, Back I mean, in the day, it was like a killer, like it was a graveyard. Out. Yeah, yeah. You're like if you're going to a T, if you're making a movie into a TV, it was Sean Patrick Flannery that actually played yeah. uh, the young Indiana Jones. But when you're going from there, and <laughs> it, it's just the bad. Ewok television show. It looked like Harrison Ford had a cameo in there that oh, too. That we'd, I'd have to look at. Me. But I just never. I can't talk about it. My apologies. Apologies to our listeners. I can't talk about it because I never watched the show, but you know, feel free to write in, let us know if there was good end of the show, if it's something that we should actually try to sit down and watch or Most whatever. Most people don't even know it existed, so I doubt that there's quite a few fans. But anyway, so we open up with the Norman Rockwell kid and pretty it's much all of them. 1912, by yes, the way. Yes, pretty much all of them uh, are and and by the way, this film did come out in eighty nine, mind you. So it's going from nineteen twelve to nineteen eighty nine. You know, the creation of the movie what, that really has nothing to it's do. It's been with what it. uh, I guess three years since the last one came out, or something like that. Yeah, but it's nineteen twelve. Temple took place in nineteen thirty five, and Raiders took place in nineteen thirty six. So this is quite a, quite a bit before Temple. Uh, and as you said, you know, they're they're just riding on horses and everything, right? You just see a bunch of kids at first. And then you get into, we zoom into a room with this dude with a leather hat and, and the fedora. Mm, that looks familiar. And you're like, okay, this is this is Indy, right? Here, oh, I, here's our I new thought adventure. You say Freddy Krueger. I thought that Here's was Freddy Krueger, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was missing the uh, red right. and green sweater. Right. But uh, anyway, so we get in there and he turns around, it's not Indy. And yeah. then it immediately cuts back to the boys and the. The more scared-looking kid is looking at the other kid saying, Indiana. Okay, so you know who the beginning hat guy was supposed to be in an early draft that was eventually cut, right? Uh, but it's still my headcanon now because it was never said that it wasn't that guy. Steven Spielberg? No. Uh, it was supposed to be Abner Ravenwood. A uh, young Abner uh, Ravenwood. That makes sense. And that's what Andy would be encouraged by, right? Because yeah. he took... He saw Abner, he saw this guy with the hat and like, you know, I much, I would much rather do what this guy is doing than what my dad, my dad over is doing, here is right, doing. Correct. He's just sitting in his books. Me and this other guy were just chasing each other on a train. You know, that's what I'd rather do. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, he's got this whole, it belongs in the museum mentality, right? Right. But yeah, so he's supposed to be Abner Raven and, and it, it was taken out, but it was never said that it wasn't him. Yeah. And so I just look look at that as that has to be Abner Ravenwood with what they're doing. Like, yeah, he's dealing with some shady people and everything. But he's also got the police force on his side. Yeah. So, I mean, I think there's at least part of him that is they're they're Yes, they're paid. They're probably like mercenaries. They're paid to help find these like things. Mercenary archaeologists. Yeah. Not really so like, like killers. They're paid say. to find these things for a private party. Instead of just going to find them and donating it to a museum, they're actually paid by somebody to go yeah. find this. It's what Indy could it to have them. become. Yeah. Yeah, and they put it in their private collection. Yeah. And that's what Indy had a problem with, is it going in somebody's private collection instead of being in a museum. And he even said it as much. You know, he said it belongs in a museum. Um, and maybe this was Abner Ravenwood, you know, just going back and forth. You know, that was who... We never really got a chance to see how Abner Ravenwood was. But we know Marion. We know Marion was not huge about the archaeology of it, you know, and it, well, let me throw so, Let me a little flip the script on you on that one. But... uh you know, it's it's also it's basically what Indy would have became if it wasn't for his father, which we didn't really find that out until this film, or if it wasn't for Temple, for yeah. what happened in Temple. Because remember, he was going that way. He was he had stolen True. that thing yeah. and gave it to Lao Che. He was getting this this thing for fortune and glory, the the Shankara stones for fortune and glory. Yeah, that he was headed that way probably, and it wasn't until the events in Temple gave him a little bit of respect. That's why I continue to say Temple is vital to understanding the character of Indiana Jones, especially if you know what time in the chron chronology. Well, you have to know that. that it takes. You have to know that to be able to uh, make that decision. You're correct. You're 100 percent correct on that. But you have to know the chronicle chronological order of of the films, which if people to pay be able attention, to. Uh, they will now. Right, right. But I mean, you really have to know that because. It wasn't up until recently that I realized that those movies, Temple, actually happened before Last Crusade. Maybe you did know that. Maybe you just didn't think it really mattered much. But, but since we've started the show, we've actually started to look in the whys and the wheres and the hows of how these stories happen. Yeah. So I don't know. It could be. It could go either way. So the whole point of this first part was because Indy saw this cross, the cross of Coronado. He knows what it is. Uh, but and he also knows that it belongs to the museum. He sees these guys and sees that they're not 
you know, they don't seem, they don't look like archaeologists, right? I don't know how archaeologists looked back then, but obviously this guy who I'm going to call Abner now, this guy Abner, he is dressed a certain way. These guys look like thugs, you know, they, they look like they're, they're just kind of in it for the treasure type of thing. So he's not all about that. So what I wrote here was when Indy was a kid, it was do the right thing. It belongs in a museum, right? That's what his dad taught him. His dad was very religious and hammered it into his head. And that's why, why do you think when he was running away, he went straight to his dad? Look what I found. But his dad didn't care. His dad's doing his own thing. Even when the cops come, the dad didn't come out saying, what's going on? He's still doing his own thing back there while Indy's dealing with the mayor and everything, right? Yeah. So... He's all about like what his dad taught him. Do the right thing. Archaeology belongs in a museum. Until that hat man taught him that personal gain and scoundrels actually win. Yeah. You know, he was like, but this is, he's like, but I did the right thing. I'm here with my dad. My dad's not saying anything. The mayor guy's not saying anything. And they're still giving it to this guy in the white suit. What's going on here? And, you know, he, you know, he tells him better luck next time, kid, and gives him that hat and everything. So I think that is kind of what sets him down. You know, he puts a hat on his head and it goes down. He lost the cross, even though he did the thing. He lost the cross, and so he lost that part of himself. That was the do the right thing. For a while, he lost the cross. So as soon as he puts that hat on and his head goes down, that's when Indy, the, the Indy that we know as the hero, kind of goes away a little bit. Well, if you when you watch through the film, for me, when you watch through this film, you figure out it's more than that. You know, I feel like after, you know, watch fully watching the film, I feel like he went that way to spite his father. Maybe. Maybe that was a big part of it because he's trying to tell him he's doing the right thing. And he's like, aren't you going to do anything, dad, dad? And dad's just staying back there while he's having to talk to these people. That's why I think there's a lot more to it. And they have a lot of different ways. Maybe in seeing that he was a little bit more adventure over the archaeology of it. And so him and his dad went that way. Um So I think what happens is he lost himself. And then Temple happens, right? And he's a fortune and glory womanizer. That's all he is. So, uh, you know, but I think then Temple gives him respect for the technology, for for the relics, the archaeology, right? Mm -hmm. I think Raiders gave him respect for a relationship and made him kind of realize his true love, which was actualized in in Kingdom. Even if he has other flings, he was more soft-hearted, you know, after that with this Elsa or whatever. Um, uh, and that gets him in trouble, obviously, in uh, in in the Last Crusade because he can't tell if a woman is trying to get one over on him or not, or whatever, because he's more soft-hearted about it. But when he lifts his head up at the beginning of Last Crusade, you know, <clears throat> he's back to doing the right in the right thing, Indy. You know that version of Indy when he's like, it belongs to a museum because he's come back. He's come back to the cross now. The a one thing, circle. right? The one thing. <laughs> Uh, you know uh, the, the, the thing that kind of kicked everything off it he, humbled him it humbled him to the point where it he he didn't win and that right. fur- furiated him so much that he was going to take what his dad taught him what that man with the hat taught him what the world has taught him and how he should be he's going to take all that and mold it into who he is and maybe not infuriated but motivated him. Yeah, certainly yeah, yeah. motivated yeah. him enough encouraged him to get back to that thing and what's the only relic that we got to see him keep and do with what he wanted out of all these movies. Um, The cross. Marcus. Oh. (laughs) Marcus is a relic. Yes. No, but the cross is the only thing that he got to keep and do with what he wants. You know, the Lost Covenant, that was taken away from him. The Shankara Stones, he eventually gave those back because it was do the right thing, you know, thing. Uh, And it wasn't his. (laughs) Right. The Holy Grail got lost to the chasm. The uh, Crystal Skull got delivered back to the aliens and it flew off to the sideways dimension world. I don't know. That movie movie still confuses me. But So this one relic, the cross, that's the one relic we get to see uh, him keep and do with what he feels is right. Remember, he finally Uh got to... Out of all the movies we've seen, we never have seen him bring back the relic and be like, I got it, Marcus. This movie you did. He's actually not as good as we think he is. But, I mean, that shows probably all the other things that he's gotten and brought back that, you know, that we've seen. There's probably many that we didn't see or whatever. It's only the big things or whatever. But this is is the only thing that we've seen him get. And it kind of connects him to that that mindset that he had when he was younger. And it's like, do the right thing, you know? So... Then the rest of the movie is kind of just like a victory lap, you know, where they get to have funny moments together, go out on all action, you know, all out 
action set pieces and locations fight a familiar and therefore audience friendly conflict and villain while giving us you know an understanding uh through his father for why indy had such personal issues because you know he's back you know and he's back to do the right thing indy you know he goes uh on the first truly selfless mission purely to save the man he idolizes fears and loves which at is the same father. time all at the same exactly time. because the first one it was about you know getting across the the raiders it was about um you know it was about the archaeology of it and everything he had just finished off with temple but i mean there was still a bit of marcus do you know what this means you know and he wanted to go out and get it and everything for what it would mean uh and temple yeah, he had and, the and stones because it was fortune and glory and you, you know? also you know you see all these government people come to him to ask for his help and things like that. But, you know, in all reality, like even in the Crystal Skull, like he's not very successful at getting things and bringing them back. Like besides what you're talking about that's with this crowd. But that's what I'm saying. Like, like why, why are the government from him? Why does the government always ask that. him for help? And Germans always get try to get him to help. And mainly to, they're just trying to keep whatever it is he's after <laughs> out of somebody else's hands. Like, look, we don't care if you get it or not. Just make sure it's destroyed or something. No, I think I think they come to him because they like we know you can get it. We know you can't keep it. So if we're around, maybe we'll just take <laughs> it from you. Yeah, like Belloc do a Belloc move. Exactly. Just wait for him to get it and grab it. So, yeah. Um, but yeah. So anyways, we see that awesome, cool scene with. Uh, Indy and uh, we find out where he gets a scar from on his chin we find out where he gets his whip from we find out where he gets his fear of snakes from I mean this is like just basically all right everything we know about Indy we got to explain it in this well, train this is what I was saying earlier <laughs> I was saying the fact that like you know every other film like we we actually do get his mother gets brought up for a short like half of a conversation with his dad and basically basically you could tell that his dad his uh, you know that was his one true love his mom and that uh he didn't want anybody else you know i mean besides german women apparently but yeah. but uh you know they have the both the same taste in in women as well but you he know loved, kind of, he loves his father he he but does he idolize and, but, and he idolizes his father but he also extremely fears his father <laughs> uh so oh, this really? was a crazy year in cinema 1989 Rachel. right so when when last when raiders came out it was like the number one thing by a long shot right, right? now well, it still, still got dwarfed by Star Wars, mind you. What? It still got dwarfed by Star no, Wars. No, I meant of that year. Oh, okay. So, uh, this was this was a crazy year in movies because it wasn't the most successful film in the U.S., but worldwide, yeah. The Last Crusade was the most successful film in 1989, and this is a crazy year in cinema. You had a lot of, like, sequels and stuff like that. Like, this is a sequel. Um, you also had, in 1989, Lethal Weapon 2, Star Trek The Final Frontier, Karate Kid 3, Ghostbusters 2, Batman, Back to the Future 2. So you had these crazy huge sequel movies with The Last Crusade being one of them and being part three in that. And it was still the highest grossing worldwide movie of that entire year. Batman was the most successful film in the U.S. Made sense. But that worldwide, sense. The Last Crusade took it. Yeah. So I thought that was pretty cool, but... Um, so getting past that, uh, we're in a familiar location again. Uh, we are in, we are back in the uh, college. He gives the cross to Marcus uh, once he's retrieved it. Uh, and, and Marcus just kind of, yep, yep, and then puts it in his pocket. Like, like, oh, this is so, yeah, he's not even just like, oh, this is so cool. And he's like, this will make – and then uh, Indiana Jones did say, you know, basically to pay me back for getting that, you need to take me out for a really nice dinner and some champagne or something. So uh, he's brought to this Walter Donovan and who explains that they have a team searching for the Holy Grail. And uh, Indiana just says, you need to get hold of my dad. He's the, the grail expert. And he's like, well, we actually already have. He's the guy that's gone missing. We need you to pick up where he left yeah. off. So Indiana quickly grabs Marcus and goes to over to his house. But before that, you know, he's basically in Donovan's office. And that's where he explains, here's the tablet, explains how to find the Holy Grail. Yeah. And explains the, 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 uh, that his father knew where to go. He had a map. He just did not know the starting point. So he needed mm -hmm. to find out what the starting point was. So... Indiana goes to his dad's house. He's like, you know, and even Marcus is like, you know, I've known you guys for a while. You've never been this worried about him. You guys have went distant and don't talk anymore. What's going on? Founds out that his dad's missing. His house been ransacked. But he also remembers a package he got in the mail earlier, and it was his dad's grail diary. Everything he's ever known or learned about the Holy Grail mm -hmm. is in that diary because his dad's like one of the most foremost experts in the yeah. world on the Holy Grail. Oh, I forgot to bring up something. What? 
the ridiculousness of Indiana Jones uh, flying in off the boat into the sea, right, with a little dinghy, and that's literally. Oh, you and, mean and he temple? survived? No, in, no, in Last Crusade. Remember when he gets he jumps off the boat just in time that he jumps off the Coronado. That's oh yeah, yeah, at the very first, and, and it blows up literally five well, seconds after he gets off. Not that he planned that or nothing, but it just so happened. Yeah, to happen exactly. That way. It was just kind of something that ridiculousness. Happened. Well, at first it made me go, well, "What was his plan to jump off into the raging seas that and, he probably would have drowned in the middle of the fracking with ocean no, with no life preserver? Yeah, no throw me a bone, okay? In the fracking ocean, it was very, it was very uh, lucky that one that the boat ro- blew up and that they weren't able to just shoot him there in the water correct two that it blew up and brought him a life ring which he didn't have to begin with how is he going to survive mm, the yep. ocean yeah that whole thing kind of was like what ridiculous was, what was his plan jumping into the ocean <laughs> this is my what point. do you do next this is why i feel and, and uh, we're about to get in another one too but this is where i feel where i'm like okay this is a bit of ridiculousness yeah, a little bit yeah so anyways they find out that they're gonna they got to go to austria which is where uh, dr schneider is um who was working with uh, henry jones and uh, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do this because we try to be respectful to the filmmakers, and I, I usually leave it way too late. But uh, today we're talking about Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. It came out in 1989. It was directed by Steven Spielberg. Uh, it was written by George Lucas and Menno Mayes. That was the ones who wrote the story. And Jeffrey Bone came back to do the uh, screenplay. Still not... Uh, I think they upset Lawrence Kasdan a little bit too much with Temple of Doom because they couldn't get him back to do this one like he did Raiders. But yeah, uh, this stars uh, Harrison Ford as Indiana Jones. As Sean, this stars Sean Connery as Professor Henry Jones. Uh, you have Allison Duty as Elsa. Duty, you said uh, Duty. Denim Elliott is back as Marcus Brody. Uh, we have John Rhys Davies as Sala. Uh, Boy we al- Blue. We also has we also have uh, Julian Glover as Walter Do- Donovan. He also plays an imperial officer in star wars and empire strikes back um and the guy who played hitler was also in star wars i'm trying to remember who he was again another point of ridiculousness by the way yeah, just I can't, throwing that out can't there. remember uh what his name was or whatever but yeah he played the guy who played hitler was also an imperial officer i think a higher ranked one in uh in star wars as well uh but we have a river Did phoenix he have the mustache River, yeah, he did. No, 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 not not normally. River Phoenix is young <laughs> indie. Uh, Michael Bo, uh, Michael Byrne as Vogel. Uh, you got Robert Edison as the Grail Knight, and uh, many others. Uh, so now getting back to what we're we're talking about, he's got they got they have, they have to find uh, Doctor Schneider who's in Austria. Uh, so this time Marcus is going with him. Uh, Marcus and Sala are both going on more of the adventure. Yeah, I mean, Sala, I can see, because Sala, you know, I've literally seen him punch people like the newspaper. Oh, Egypt Times, Egypt Times, and then he punches that dude right in the face, right? I mean, this that actually happened in this film. But Are you talking I, about I, when he's like, <laughs> run, run? <laughs> yeah. But that's one of the that best scene parts was of this so movie. That so awesome. Yeah. But he's it's, just like, oh, okay, I got you. Run. Yeah. Um, so what we got here is run. that we got these things. Run. <laughs> <Yes>. Of course. <laughs> run. Yes. Ravens, yeah. got it here. <laughs> Just finished reading it myself. <laughs> Run. Uh, yes. Yeah. Egyptian mail. Morning edition. Uh, Run. Did you say... Uh, Run! <laughs> Marcus, that's why Marcus is last place on my, I, my top exactly. indie uh, uh, companions is because I'm like, Nate's even going, run. I know. <laughs> As he's starting, okay. and he's okay. just staring, like nodding, uh-huh, run. You do see why I chose Salas for, 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 for I think, the greatest one. Because no, I love John Rice I, I know, he, he's such a great actor, and he's, you know, he was he's definitely a Shakespearean actor, because you see a little bit of it. It comes out, like, when you, when you, in the first one, right, in later, when she kisses him, he starts singing, and, and, and he actually, I believe that's from Shakespeare. Oh, yeah, whenever he's like, no, I, I think he was singing like an old school song, but yeah, whenever he started yeah. going down the docks after she kissed him on the Yeah, but, whatever. but I mean, you know, like, he's the only one that has been in all of them. I mean, obviously Marcus has, but, you know, he's 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 the only one that's been in all of them, or not Except all of them, the, 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 at least two of them, yeah, right? right? So, like, as far as being the best assistant, you know, helper, or whatever, I mean, I don't even know how we describe it. He's very it. good, and he he's very faithful to Indy and very correct, helpful. Correct, And I get that. He's the one guy that Indy knows he can trust besides yeah. his own father, Marcus. The reason know? I didn't uh, put him higher up when we did those is because those other ones were, like, there the whole time, except for Willie Scott, because I just can't put her towards the so, top. So, how would you rate the leading ladies, then? Who would be number one on your list? 
Uh, number one is Marion, of course. Okay. Um, number two is Willie. Like, she's annoying, but at least, you know, she has right. something with him and she's a good person. I'd have to say Marion. Elsa, Elsa's yeah. number three because she was a traitor and she... She was, but she wasn't. Like, like she she was only... She was selfish. She was only out for herself. Well, she wanted the grail. She right. re- I got the sense that she didn't care about the Nazi cause no, or anything, didn't. much like Belloc yeah. and some of these other people. Yeah. But... Um, but she still did portray him, and she slept with both the father and the son. That was weird, you know. I don't, I don't know. I just can't get. I, it's weird for me. And then of course Marion comes back for another movie, so True. gotta make her first place. True. But, um, so, anyways, they, uh, him and him and Elsa meet, and uh, they. She takes him to the library where his father was last seen at. Um, she went to go. He sent her off to go look up something at a different part of the library. When she came back, he was gone. Um, so he finds these Roman numerals that correspond with the library, and he finds that X marks the spot in the floor. And uh, so he, he kind of is like, look, they're all looking for the 10, uh, the number 10, and he goes up these stairs and see X, and just kind of like in a callback to what he had said previously in the classroom, X never marks the spot. In this one, X, X marks, marks the spot. The spot. <laughs> yeah. And you were talking about a movie mess up that well, there. Well, if you look at when he goes out down there and he gets the, you know, the divider pole, I don't know what you call those things. Oh, uh, stanchion. Stanchion. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I should know that. Should, that's a Coast Guard term, too. Yeah. And, um, and because well, yeah. we have to use them in security as Correct. well. So, um, so why not? But when he goes to break the granite, there's no X there anymore. Is that granite or marble? Marble. Whatever. I don't know if it is. I don't know. Like, marble, I, I, I kind of feel like you can't just... It would be just, hard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, but those stanchions thin. back in the day were legit, <laughs> too, though. Yeah, I mean, you they're not probably legit. knock out a, a, a rhino. <laughs> but, I mean, that's another, that's another thing about this movie. You know, we talked about how Temple was, like, the funniest, I think, in my opinion. It's the darkest, but it's the funniest. There there aren't a lot of funny things in this movie. Well, especially the interaction between Henry and, and... Yeah, but a lot of that stuff, to me, is corny, at least. Uh, you know, it's, like, kind of a little uh, cheesy or whatever. Whereas I like it. Temple, I like like, it was it. a lot more like cutting I think it was just funnier yeah. I don't know maybe it was, it was still darker, darker and that's why it was yeah. funnier or whatever but this one is just like little jokes as far as like the dude stamping the books and then boom every time yeah but if you look at the ground when he's hitting it there's no X there Oh yeah, that's what you're now, talking now, about. Now you could probably push it off as being, you know, for one, they're not going to ha- have Harrison Ford break, you know, granite on a because obviously that building was a real, real deal type bu- building. But you're not going to have any breaking. There should have been a marble uh, or anything else like that. There should have been a cooler uh, archaeology type of puzzle type thing way to open that. Yeah, like entrance. like you know how you move the blocks around to m- fit the shape. You know, you got a square and you've got. You got squares that move around inside the square, except yeah. for you got one blank exactly. there. Exactly. Yeah. Like the yeah. the marble wasn't it wasn't marked. It was you know he was hitting the he was hitting. It. I didn't notice that. Yeah, and and uh, but anyway, so you know we we get down there and obviously Marcus. Like I I don't really see any purpose that Marcus really served. Well, uh, what did he, they say? Uh, they pretty much just said, go grab this or whatever, but he just basically met him back in the hotel room afterwards. And then on top of that, like he was supposed to hold on to the book, but then he literally, you're the map, and then he literally just, uh, it was pretty easy to take it from him. Yeah, but he really served no purpose. They tore, they tore pages out of it, though. Yeah, Marcus well, Indi- had the pages, Indiana right? Did, no, Indiana tore the pages out. So Yeah, it just didn't it didn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense what was the purpose of Marcus. You know, like he wasn't even like the comedy relief more so. Yeah. Uh da, 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 da. so down, when we're down there, we uh we find one of the um the knights of the first crusade. Uh and the brother. Uh, yeah, there he has a pretty complete uh uh inscription of what, you know, the instructions are of how to find the how to find the uh the and the, the we're, Holy we're, Grail. We're in Rome, or no, Venice. no, it's Venice. That's right, Venice. And uh, they actually find out that the way to find uh, the uh, Grail is you have to start at Andretta. That's the city they find out through the, uh, yeah. the, the tablet. That's the only piece of information that Henry Jones, uh, Indy's father, was missing, and then he could go find the Holy Grail. He was missing that one last part, and he was kidnapped right before he was able to and find it. And this is why it. I love this movie more so than any of the other ones, because it's it's a journey. You know what I mean? It's like like with Raiders of the Lost Ark, yeah, he as long as he knew where the map room was in, in Egypt, right, and... And how high the staff was pretty much just pointed directly to the Ark. You know, Temple of Doom, it was pretty much, 
you know, they said, go to this house, you know, get us our stones back, you know, and the temple was literally under the building. Right. With this one, you know, there's a whole trip, a whole journey that they had to go through. <laughs> I mean, it, and if you notice a lot of these movies that had came out afterwards, like even Transformers, right? Yeah. Transformers and uh, The Mummy or, and, and uh, uh, um, what was what was the one I was thinking about? Just but you're just talking about how where the MacGuffin is like right there close to where people would be. But they no, take them in like no, a long... No, it's just just that there's... It's like a, 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 a treasure hunt. Right. You know what I mean? Like there's a whole journey for it. Where with the other two... Yeah, with the other two, they, they were kind of like that. Where it was like... It was like, okay, point A, it goes from point A to point B. Within, but I mean, they like spent all this time other. and there's like this clue and that thing to help you get the distance for this. And then you got to go over here and redig over here. And then finally you could find the Ark of the Covenant. But then when they got trapped in there, they just went down the hall and they were at the airport. <laughs> you know? Well, it's yeah. Like, and Indiana Jones tends, tends at, to do And the last like crusade yeah. in this one, it was like the, the last night they had to go through these and find them X marks the spot and break open the thing. And yeah. they had to go through all around the to long, long the cavern nights. and they're, they're yeah. searching this way and that. And they find the, and then they come up through a sewer underneath the rest yeah of you know it's like but, but oh then, there's shortcuts to these places that are very essentially yeah i mean in you know no person in a thousand years figured out and there's, the temple of doom you know, the entrance to the temple is off of a guest bedroom yes you know the fireplace <laughs> the, yes. the guest bedroom that that but, willie was staying but you know it, it, it's kind of interesting too with this one is is very you know like a lot of movies like national treasure things like that it seemed like a lot of these movies kind of copied you know, Da Vinci Code even. You know, I mean, Da Vinci Code was a lot more in depth into it. But, you know, a lot, all these movies I felt like took from Indiana Jones. Yeah. You know, and I'm sure Indiana Jones and Spielberg and Lucas definitely probably, there's probably a movie that, that's be way before our time that, that this one even copied. You know, I mean, the treasure hunt type type movie. And that's what this, what made this movie so great, I think, is just that the, the whole journey to get to the point, even when they get yeah, to, the, to the actual temple, you know, they still have to go through uh, three other trials just to get to the end. And can you imagine a movie made nowadays where a woman or where a man just picked a woman up and carried her over the shoulder just to avoid walking in rats? Because remember, they were in the yeah. rats. And he's like, "Come here!" And he threw her over his yeah. shoulder, and he carried her out Chivalry like that. Is like, dead. like, yeah, like that. You wouldn't see that in movies. No. It's like, oh, what is this weak woman and all that? Yeah. So. Anyways, they uh, they're they're happened upon by some um, some secret protectors, uh, a la the, um, the, the guys the, that drive the, the little, little cars. No, in, like the group in the mummy that were protecting yeah. the Book of the Dead. Or they whatever. drive the little mini cars uh, and the Shriner. <laughs> they got Shriner the little, guys. So they got the Fez hats. On yeah, the Shriners. So. Right. I don't know. Why are you being serious? Yeah, you know the Shriners. You know back back in the days, especially eighties and nineties, the Shriners. They're the old men that drive. Oh the yeah, cars. yeah, 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 yeah. They're they're dressed like that. Yes. Definitely, yeah. So they uh, <laughs> they, they chased him down and they try to blow him up and everything. But then they find out they're not really like bad guys that are trying to find it first. They're trying to keep people away, much like the people in the mummy. What movie? Oh, that's, that's what I was going to say. What that's movie? what I was getting to. I know, is I'm that, being yeah. <laughs> you jerk. It but is no, one of my favorite movies that, after all. And they probably ripped that part off of Indiana yeah, oh, Jones. Sure. we got to have a secret this, society. This is the point I was trying to make. Everything. Even Transformers right. did it. You know, I mean, yeah, Transformers did it. Society. Yeah, and, 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 and a lot of these different movies, I feel like it copied that formula, and that's why, because it works so well. Yeah. Yeah, so they find out that after a long boat chase and a pretty epic boat chase that like, it was a pretty with awesome that propeller and stuff that that's like the the he propellers stepped, in Raiders where it yep. just looks so realistic. Yep. He he definitely you know Spielberg stepped it up in this film compared. Oh yeah, to just the set other piece two. after set piece just, after set piece. I mean, because you know the probably the studio at this point was like. Here's a bunch of money. Go yeah. make another movie. Go balls out. And, yeah, go make but, another. But this time, make it a little bit Indiana. more like Raiders because nobody likes yes, Temple. Yes, and let's throw some family in there to to kind of liven it up and give it a little bit of a twist, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, they they find out from them that they're just trying to protect it and all that. And they're like, well, maybe. And he's like, look, I'm not here for any stupid grail. I'm just here to find my dad. Yeah. And they're like, well, maybe then you're the person that needs to find it mm-hmm. then. Um so the, he kind of helps find, you know, here's where your dad is. Your dad's being held in this castle, which I don't know how he knew about it unless they were just watching. Um, because you know that Elsa knew where yeah. where he was, even though she was pretending at this point. Correct. 
they go back to their hotel and they find out that people have broken into their hotels and which come on again another ridiculousness yeah. part of it like you would not hear somebody outside the shower yeah and and you would be taking that long of a shower not to notice somebody is in your room just throwing shit well stuff remember around. because of temple and raiders after that he's a little bit soft-hearted he's not as hard hard and where or where he mm-hmm. probably would have noticed something like that that, that was off in this you know it's just you know the, the the jones men you know that that's their weakness is is strong we're getting into that Rachel territory on that so, one right a little bit but she uh you know he she's like what is the what do they want he pulls out the diary from his pocket so it basically shows her where his diary where the diary is so they only did that to find out where the diary was to see if indy had it yeah. with him well he, which he's he such did. a trusting person if you notice like you know, people literally walk all over him because he's not uh, he's not a, he's not an yeah. agent. He's yeah. not a secret agent. I know, but like, I mean, like, like his dad, like he's a smart guy, but he's not. He doesn't have to like a point. He he he's smart, but he really doesn't have like street smarts. Like he trusts everybody, and really, like there should be like a total of four people he should or three people in the whole world he should trust. He didn't well trust- four like Marion. Marion, like not Willie, don't trust Willie. Short round, eh, you probably could, but he's still a little. You know, he he's not the kind of person. Um, he didn't trust the little emperor person and the little helper in Temple saying, no, we don't yeah. do that stuff. We don't do the thuggy cult stuff here yeah. anymore. He's like, oh, are you sure about that? You know, that yeah. type of thing. I, I think that this is just... He trust a, his dad. Like I think it's a dad. woman thing. I yeah. think that he's, uh, uh, you know, his because of his womanizing days, he sees a pretty pretty woman that's strong or whatever. He yeah. just Because even his dad didn't sense. fall for that one. Like, his dad did not, like, say... Hey, I've got this notebook. Or even if no. he did, but his like, dad did he, fall for her. He did he find did. out that he was a not, yeah. that she was a Nazi quicker than Indiana did. Yeah, and, but he didn't trust her to let her know that he has, you know, the notebook. Because he was even you like, know? like, don't give it to her. She's a Nazi. Yeah. And he's and like, exactly, Wait. <laughs> exactly. So, anyways, they have to go to, um, they have to go to a place in Austria. It's a castle uh, controlled by Nazis in Austria where uh, Henry's being held at. Um, it's a Nazi ca- castle, but that whole scenery was beautiful. It I mean, really was. It was just. It was. It's kind of one of those things where you're like, you know, you know, at that time the, these are evil people, but that scenery was just beautiful. Like Germany in general, you know, it's it's such a beautiful country and countryside and stuff like that. You know, European countryside that you hear about. It, and there's that Austria castle. It, might, it reminds me of that castle mm-hmm. that mom and dad do there. Yeah, uh, there. That honeymoon thing that, that happens after you get married. Yeah, it was yeah. a honeymoon or something. 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 Uh, but, you know, he goes in there and he tries to save his dad and he mm-hmm. tries to make up this stuff. Remember when he, they first get in the castle and he's like doing his his Scottish accent and everything yeah. and shaking his jacket. But uh, he they don't believe him. No. And so this is what I put down. Why doesn't he just always lead with knocking them out? Because his little schemes, his uh, whether he's Andy, Andy or Han, his little schemes where he's acting this or that, they never work, you know. In, Ever. In, in Return Ever. of the Jedi, you know, when he had his little plan, he stepped on a twig and the guy turned around and, and saw him, so he just laid him out, you know. Well, Stuff and, that they should have yeah. just led with in the first place. I, I mean, he, he <laughs> usually has his friends get him out of this this nonsense. Like like Chewie does, Chewie does it all the time. You know, like he tries to, he's like, comes out with these crazy plans and Chewie's like, all right, I'm going along, but I'm probably the end, one, end, of, end up being the one that's going to pull you out of this nonsense. You know, and just like with the Indiana Jones, you know, it's usually usually like solace or uh, you know, I mean, you know, the the some of the women Marians, things like that. So, you know, these guys are the ones pulling him out of the nonsense yeah. because they're like, okay, this is not going to work. Yeah. So he finds his dad and he knocks knocks a couple guys out and he kind of looks at his dad, smiling for approval, but his his dad just kind of looking at him like it's not impressed and everything. It just seems like every single time he really wants to believe. That his dad will start to treat him like a son, and, you know, he doesn't. Or, or even a peer, in a way, you know, like an archaeology peer, in a way. Like, he kind of, he's looking, he, he I kind of feel like he's already, he wants his dad's approval, like, in his life, but I think he wants his dad's approval more for his his career choice well for both of them i yeah. think it's probably equal or whatever because i mean he hits him over the head with that vase and breaks it and he says something like to the effect of uh oh no and uh, you know indy's like it's okay dad don't worry about it but he's not worried about that he hit indy you know he's worried Read that he's, he's like wait this is the a, boss yeah and then he's like oh maybe it's a fake or whatever you know he's just like yeah. looking at that he has no concern oh whatsoever if, if indy is hurt but 
I also think that that's a lot of it. He has a lot of confidence in Indy that Indy yeah. can take care of himself. Yeah, because he's not he super his, flabbergasted at, at the way Indy ha- handles except himself. Except for when he kills the Nazis. And he's like, okay, yeah. What but, did you do? But that'd I be like you did anybody, that. you know, you've seen your child do that. You know, it's, it's kind of, yeah, it's going to take you back. But, you know, in the long run, you know, I mean, because he knew that Indy had always been like this, you know, since he was a little kid, obviously. You know what I mean? He was always the... Uh, the wannabe action star, but he was just too smart for his own good anyways. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so anyways, they, they try to escape, but they get recaptured by the Nazis. That's when you see Elsa and Donovan there. That's when, uh, Indy's dad tries to say, don't do it. She's a Nazi. And, uh, Indy doesn't really believe it. So he gives up what, you know, his gun and all that. And then you find out, yeah, she is a Nazi. <laughs> she grabs the, she grabs the journal from Indy's pocket and everything. And they leave him. They tie him up. But that's when uh, Henry uh, tells Indy that it's actually guarded by booby traps. Booby traps! And that's what he needs the journal for. Yeah. Um, Indy has the journal, but he tore out the more important pages and gave them to Marcus. Marcus met with Sala. And that's when we get that awesome <laughs> run scene that we keep getting. But they, they get captured uh, because of that. So uh, they're, they're well, t- it, the way Sala, uh, he gets captured is... Is you know he he basically shoves him into the back of a truck. Well, he thinks it's in in a house, and it ends up being the back of a truck and taking. Oh off. yeah, yeah, it's that big old truck. Like, like get in that door, and then it closes but up. But you know it's like funny because you you, like, oh, you see him in in uh, Raiders right. And he's he's the guy that's kind of like sneaking off and, and, you know, in control of the town kind of thing. And he would be the one that would like sneak Marcus off in a truck. Yeah. And that pretty much happened to him. Because, I mean, they did. Remember whenever they went into uh, Indy had something, but then they covered it up with a storefront. Yes. Or yeah. Whatever, yeah. Yeah. But that. that's what I'm saying. Like Solace is usually the one that then ends up doing that kind of thing. Where in this one, he it, it doesn't happen. That yeah. Way, so. Yeah, so, I mean, also in this scene is when, uh, you know, Indy asks his dad, you know, how did you know? And and uh, Henry says, she, she talks in her sleep. Yeah. You know, that type of thing. And uh, that's the, and he goes, huh, wait a minute. And then he realizes, oh, okay, we both yeah. slept with this chick. Um, and then uh, whenever he's like, you know, oh, we got this. And they're like, there's pages missing. He's like, yeah, I gave him to Marcus Brody. And they're like, oh, we'll capture Brody. He's like, huh, Marcus Brody? Are you kidding me? He knows every language between <laughs> here and whatever the place was. He'll blend in. He'll disappear. He's got a two-day head start on you, which is more than he needs. Brody's got friends in every town and village from here to the Sudan. He speaks a dozen languages, knows every local custom. He'll blend in, disappear. You'll never see him again. With any luck, he's got the grill already. Uh, does anyone here speak English? Or even ancient Greek? Uh, water, no, thank you, sir. You speak does speak anybody? And speak Henry's kind of like, what? Wait, are we talking about the same person? Yeah, because yeah, no, no, because he believed him. He's like, yeah. oh well, I don't know more, but maybe he's that good. He's like, well, I thought you said that he would dis. He's like, are you kidding me? He gets lost in his own museum. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, they're tied up, and there's an awesome, hilarious scene where they try to get out, but uh, Henry, uh, in complete anti-James Bond fashion, just you know, he completely drops the lighter and lights the whole room on fire, and he's like, uh, and we get, in, we get into another got a bit of a problem here. Yeah. <laughs> We get a little, a little bit of more uh, ridiculousness. Yeah, and he's like, no, the carpet's on fire. Yeah. You know, now so. The walls. <laughs> so, anyways, they have to get out of there. Uh, so, they escape from the castle, and then there's a cool, you know, they set the boat off, and then there's a cool chase scene. Another another set piece where they're, they're running in the motorcycle, and, uh, you know, they're all doing these different things. But um, they get to the, the beach, and this is what I'm talking about, where Andy, Andy realizes he's got a little bit more from his dad than he thought. Yeah. And that, you know, they got the plane after him, and the plane keeps coming uh, to strafe him and everything. And at the last minute, Henry looks down and sees the birds and opens up his umbrella. Go, go, go. Makes them all fly up. Because he's supposed to be British, even though though we know he's Scottish. But he's supposed to be British, and therefore, they they, all British people carry umbrellas. Right, right. Of course they do, because they they can't stand the sunlight. It makes them too pasty. And because it rains a lot in England. So, So, anyway, so he he scares all the birds, and he got multiple birds for strikes, and the, uh, the the plane falls and then you just see Andy look at his father he's just kind of strolling on the beach with the umbrella open and you get this kind of weird look on Indy where he's just like huh like he realizes something and I think he just realized he's got a bit more or his dad gave him a bit more of him than he thought he did yeah. you know yeah, his, yeah. his quick thinking because Indiana does crap like that all the time correct real quick thinking stuff so um, anyways they got to go to Berlin now because Indy's like well no it's fine we got the map and uh, and 
Henry's like, we need the book. He's like, there are booby traps. It's not just the map. There are, as, uh, as Short Round or Data would say. That's what I said, booby traps. Quiet, shh. God, these guys. So anyways, there's booby traps and he has them all uh, shows how you're supposed to get through this temple without getting killed or whatever. So anyways, they go to Berlin. Uh, they He meets up with Elsa, takes the book from her in a really weirdly violent scene. He has his hand around her throat and he's like, all I have to do is squeeze. And she's like, all I have to do is scream. You can tell she's not into the Nazi thing. She hates that they're burning mm-hmm. books and everything because she's an, she's an intellectual, you know, she's archaeologist. an archaeologist. Yeah, she's yeah. an academic. She yeah. doesn't like book burnings and stuff. So you can see she's just in it for what it would give her. It gives her the power to go and do these things and find these relics mm-hmm. and everything everything but you tell she really doesn't care about the nazi part of it but which he probably you would not hear her scream i mean no. it was so loud there anyways but so. he runs into adolf hitler and accidentally just holding out the book and hitler just takes the so thing random. signs his name so random. and you get you see kind of a little smirk and a little snicker from from indy and you think he's realizing like wow this book's gonna be worth a lot of money well like, not only that it's like literally li- that's Hitler's the book people, they're looking for. Yeah, Hitler's people is looking. He for literally this book. handed Hitler what Hitler was looking for, yes. and he signed it, and gave it back, and he's just like, "That <laughs> <laughs> could have yeah. could have gone really bad, you know that yeah. type of thing." So he had horrible handwriting. Yeah, not not too good. But uh, anyways, they get on the Zeppelin to leave Germany, and uh, you get the awesome. And by the way, the guy that's walking with that main bad guy when they first he's get the on the blimp, singer of Led Zeppelin. Now, <laughs> that's the guy who who was the, played the big guy that got beat yeah. up by Indy in the first two movies. So yeah. he doesn't actually have a fight scene in this movie. He's it's just kind of a shame. Actually. He doesn't really have a scene with yeah. Indy. Yeah, they shouldn't. Have but he does fight him. quite a few people in this film. Yeah, but then of course you get the great the great line whenever he throws him off the thing. No ticket. Yeah, <laughs> and everybody everybody bring brings out their, out tickets. their tickets and stuff. That was such a great line. But another thing I want to point out here is this all feels like a Bond movie with them going to Nazi Germany yeah. and coming this way, flying yeah, I mean, a I plane. Feel like they, you, you know, finally like, you finally zeroed in on what makes the Nazi movie or a Bond movie and Bond movie and a lot of its absurd things and everything. So, um, did the blimp leave all the passengers' luggage? Because he dude got thrown off onto that pile of luggage that were there. Yeah, that was kind the of bottom. weird. And then the blimp took off, and he's just like, eh. and I'm like, they left all the luggage. Well, Maybe there's coming on another blimp, or it could have been another blimp or whatever. But why was there only? I mean, you saw it when you first saw the scene. Yeah. There's one blimp there, cool. one pile of luggage. It's like somehow for some reason they took off and just <laughs> got to put the luggage on. But anyways, they get into a plane and they they get. That's probably the the part that I'm talking about where you know they they have the the birds and everything yeah or whatever but uh they get into a a play uh you know plane fly a dog fight and and you know get the funny scene where henry's like they got us son <laughs> he's the one that shot the back of the plane <laughs> and indy knows no different so and, uh, i love this the, the scene where you know one of the, the the comments here was uh these people are trying to kill us these people are trying to kill us i know dad experience for me happens to me all the time another great scene um so anyways uh they uh where did where are we at where are we at uh dog fight uh they crash land and they bring down their pursuers um so when they meet up with sala they they tell them about what happened to marcus um so they already they're already heading towards where the grail is right so they got to do some catching up now so um they actually start they, they, uh, what part is that yeah okay so they're in a convoy again with the, the with the tank and man that tank is flying yeah did you it is did going you, pretty quickly but i whenever they were doing the 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 chasing i'm like i know if tanks can go relatively fast if they want to but yeah and then we get to the scene where um uh it co- indiana jones copied maverick <laughs> yeah yeah that copied maverick and not the other way around <laughs> but i mean they do they they get into this huge this huge chase with the the tank and they're trying to free uh, marcus and they told his dad to stay behind but his dad didn't stay behind and so he went down to uh and he got into the tank and they did this weird little hand try to thing save him do. everything yeah and then they get stuck in the tank right so now they've captured henry he just basically just turned, turned himself turned in himself as in. a as a and he meanwhile so Indy's hard and he's got a whole like five horses he's carrying along and he sees mark or he sees solid bringing the camels he's like i said no camels 
<laughs> and but they have to like give that up because now they're like, okay, Marcus well, no, he is in there, the and now your dad's in there too. He needed the camels to replace the car. Remember? Well, yeah, but he, uh, Harrison Ford didn't learn. Uh, Indy didn't want camels. He likes horses, whereas <laughs> yeah. Saul is like, look, these can last longer in the desert. But, anyways, he doesn't want he doesn't want camels. Irregardless, so, yeah, which is not a real <laughs> word. But um, so, anyways, they they had that awesome fight where you know he's hanging on by a satchel Stewie on that little pole and everything, and so it's going back and forth, and it's another one of these awesome great set uh, set pieces. Now, I don't know if it's as good as Raiders because it had that realistic. You actually had somebody being dragged by this, you know, at full speed by these cars and stuff. And it just looked really cool. But, I mean, I don't know. This is another one of those deals where... <laughs> it's a they, fracking tank, bro. Yeah, they destroy everything else. And the only thing that's left is the tank. Uh, Marcus and, and uh, Henry get out of the tank. But the other dude's still stuck in there with Indy. The tank goes off. And you have this moment where they think that ridiculous moment coming up yeah they think that he's dead and he's like what have i done and from that point on um i think that it kind of being out in the field and having something like that happen because when you're in a library nothing like this crazy happens but this kind of awful thing happens to indy all the time where he loses people that he loves or likes or mm -hmm. whatever and so now henry's got a taste of like the real world kind of like his son's been getting for the last decades or mm -hmm. whatever and uh it really hits him. It hits him hard, and it's the one thing I think that may, makes him kind of wake up to, I haven't been as close with my son as I wanted to. And he even said, yeah, I didn't tell him. I didn't have time or whatever it was that he said. And then, you know, Indy climbs up at a little side crevice and everything and kind of looks like, oh, what are we looking at? And looks over the, cri the cliff too, and that's when Henry notices him, and they have that moment. And you actually kind of see a little smile come on Indy's face, which you don't see much. So who do you think did it better, Mel Gibson <laughs> or Harrison Ford? I, I think that Mel Gibson did a better job at as far as being like the intensity of it. Now, Harrison Ford looked great afterwards because, you know, he lost his hat, his jacket's halfway off and everything. And he's just like his hair's all messed up. And he's like, <laughs> but I liked how when <laughs> and they were both with their dads, right? Yeah. Yeah. I liked how when Maverick got in, you know, or got back, he's like. How's that wheel? <laughs> so, what's with the wheel? Oh, it's fine. There was nothing wrong with the wheel, but... I but know, I know, I know. I got a real good, close look at the wheel from underneath. Um, so, anyways, this, this group now that we have, it's uh, Indiana, Henry, Marcus, and Sala. They all catch up with uh, the Nazis who are led by Donald yeah, I love the fact that we get so much more Sala, you know, for the rest of the film. Right? Yeah. So. And, and they're in this place called the Canyon of the Crescent Moon, which looks like a crescent moon from obvious. a distance yeah, That's or whatever. so obvious, dude. But it's like some of the horseback riding is, I think, probably still like in Arizona, Utah or whatever, but it's supposed to be Yeah. Where did else. the dang camel go? I don't know. That's a good question. He probably told them to let the cameras, camos go so they can get back on the horses or whatever. But So they go there, and it's Petra, right? That's where they film this at. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be, uh, what is it called, the Valley of the Crescent, the Canyon of the Crescent Moon or whatever. But it's Petra. We've seen Petra before. And Petra is just this beautiful place where these monuments are carved out of stone. And I'd love to go there one time. Mm -hmm. looks absolutely beautiful. So, uh, But this is where the Holy Grail is supposed to be. Um, so... He's like, help us. And uh, Indy's like, look, I want to keep it out of Nazi hands, but I really don't care about this grail. And he's now he's got his dad back. He's like, look, you know, we just want to go home or whatever. And uh, he's like, I don't need it. He's like, he's like, you don't need me to get the grail or something like that. And he's like, yeah, you're right. I don't. So he shoots Henry, uh, Sean Connery's character. And it's the only thing that would make Indy go after that at this point. Because he doesn't care about it, he just now he's got made this connection with his dad again, or maybe even for the first time ever, he he wants to continue with that. He doesn't care about this stupid yeah. relic. So, anyways, they make him go through this uh, <clears throat> through this gamut of of booby track. That's what I said, booby traps. Quiet, shh, God, he's God. And uh, he has to go find the Holy Grail. So he has to go and look, you know, step on the Jehovah words. And then he has to bow. In Latin, it starts with an I. Yeah. The penitent man and all that. So the penitent man bows and prays and all that kind of stuff. So uh, he avoids the blades. He avoids falling down forever. And then the last one is the leap of faith. And uh, it's really just a bridge that if you went like this, you could see it. Yeah. 
<laughs> it amounts know, to that. Like you look that was at pretty it, pretty cool though. Like that was, was real good. Sci- that was good uh, CGI effect. I mean, it really wasn't. A or CGI, it was a good. But it was a good real world explanation yeah, to why he yeah. could be floating. Because mm-hmm. you know you got to be scientific. You got to give a real world explanation. Right. But yeah, but then you go into a room that where somebody has <laughs> been alive for a couple of centuries. So. Exactly. So like like why don't you just make it an invisible bridge? You make it uh, an optical illusion to where seriously, all you have to do is. is Oh, catch yeah, there me. it is. Oh, let me look at it this catch way. Oh, yeah, there angle. it is. Yeah. yeah, you just catch throw, another throw angle and you see it. On it. And the camera even does it. It looks at it and then it spins mm-hmm. and you can see it. I don't know. I, I thought it was cool, though. Like, I thought that was... <laughs> Back then, I thought it was. I was like, "This is pretty cool." Yeah, I did too, and it was kind of a cool way of doing that. And then you have, you know, our our moment of hubris here at the end, where pick the right cup, and obviously Alice is picking the wrong one because she doesn't like the Nazis anymore. Yeah, and she doesn't want to be a part of it, so she picks the one, wrong one on purpose. Um, Which and the guy just goes for it, like he's like, he's like, okay, so if you pick, like, ah, yes, yes, if you pick the wrong one, your life gets taken away. If you pick the right one. You give, you get longer life. And there's his hubris. He thinks that she wants to find it as badly as he does, and bad enough to where yeah. But she didn't even look around. But she, she like, she's like, like, like seriously. One. I was gonna make the comment that she just turned around and picked the one that was yes. right behind her yes. and everything. Yeah. But yeah, didn't even like put it. But you know, I, he I think, fell I think for if it. I was in that, I mean, not that I would ever be in this guy's, uh, you know shoes or nothing but i feel like if i was ever there and that i would be like mm, i think i'm gonna i got this myself i think i'm gonna choose this myself or if this was belloc from the first raiders who's a lot who's just as smart as indy like his maybe uh, know a little what, something what about it? his moriarty yeah he would probably be like oh, okay cool Indy, you drink it. Exactly. You know, I want to see what happens. But first. let's let's go ahead and uh, tr- uh, trust this real nutball. Bring a couple of your soldiers yeah, with you. Have them stuff. try it yeah. out. You know, stuff well, no, like they that. Killed, they already decapitated all those guys. Well, yeah, they had a few left though. I think yeah. there was a few <laughs> left over. <laughs> so. Discarded. I mean, there was a, a few heads still attached to bodies and everything. So, uh, anyway, she has him killed by drinking out of the wrong one. Indy obviously says, "Okay, this is the cup of a carpenter." The, the most poor, sad cup you could think of, yeah, or whatever, compared to the rest cup, of the clay them. cup. Yeah. yeah, just because that makes sense. Because you know, it's not you think, oh, the king of well, if you know history, you know that he was just a poor carpenter and wasn't, you know, but they're thinking, oh, well, it has to be the cup of Christ, this beautiful thing. Yeah. I mean, even us, he had no, sl- not he had no slaves, no, but was called a master. Exactly. We, 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 not even as archaeologists, and maybe not even as Christians, we would know, okay. It's not going to be any. We know the history Flashy, of Jesus. Yeah. We know that these were all people uh, that didn't have any homes that, did, that, yeah. that wandered. Yeah. Why would they have these <laughs> these jeweled cups or whatever? It's just so. Silly. Anyways, they uh, he drinks it. Nothing happens to him. He runs back out, gives his dad a drink, heals him, pours it all over his wound. And that doesn't mean Indiana Jones will live a lot longer because he drank from it. That's what a lot of speaking people think, and they 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 said that they could have actually made these in, these new Indiana Jones movies modern day and just made him as old as he was, just saying that he's still aging but very slowly, and they could have made him modern day. But yeah, I mean the new ones are I mean, back in the fifties. Yeah, and they also I think they killed off they killed off Connery before. Uh, yeah, before he, he actually passed away. So, I mean, maybe there was never... There, maybe it had, hey, man, he, I mean, Marcus really probably did. Yeah, Marcus died, I think. The uh, the actor died, I believe, in like 92 or something yeah. like that. So. so that could have just been chalked up to the grail lore being blown out of proportion. And all the grail really did was heal you. It didn't really keep you alive. Yeah, well, but then you see the... the the uh, Right, but I mean, he would have just kept drinking it. Like, you have to keep drinking it. Yeah. Is what I mean. Yeah. Like when you get a little old, you got to drink it and it kind of makes you younger again. Who knows? There's, a, there's yeah, another background to it. That's what I'm saying. It's like not just one, just one drink makes you immortal forever. You have to keep drinking out of that cup. No matter where you get the water yeah. from, you got to keep drinking out of that cup. Cut people's heads off and, and right. say, I'm, uh, there can only be one. Right. <laughs> there can only be one. Here there we are. can only be one. Born to be kings. So, anyways, we'll Elsa. I was seeing that song once an episode. Elsa being an idiot because she was in the room when he said it she was an idiot do not pass the seal with the cup just like the knight said or maybe he said that just before the elsa and the dude came in because i know india was in there by himself for a little bit i mean regardless like she has literally been listening to indy's instructions the entire film then they literally the, brought him in to help them. yes and then so the one time that she doesn't listen to him she loses her life yeah, and then yeah 
and usually how it happens in these types of movies. So she starts doing that and causes an earthquake, and of course it drops out. And we have a funny little scene because first Elsa's trying to grab it, and he's like, "Leave it alone! Just give me your hand," because all he has on is all she has on is her gloves. And so she's slipping out of his hand. He's like, "Give me your other hand," and she just wants to go for she's that. Like, cup. I can reach it. Elsa. Elsa, 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 your other hand, honey, I can't hold you. I can reach it. I can reach it. Elsa, give me your hand. Give me your other hand. Elsa! All she cares about is that cup and the everlasting life and what it would mean. And uh, then she falls and loses her life. But then he falls with another earthquake and his dad catches him. And now he wants to go after it. He's like, I can almost reach it, dad. Junior, give me your other hand. I can't hold on. I can get it. I can almost reach it, Dad. Indiana. Indiana. Let it go. And he keeps saying, yeah, he keeps saying, he keeps saying, Junior, Junior. And then he quietly just says, Indiana. And that's when Indy turns. Because he's never been called Indiana. Remember, by his, his dad, father, his dad yeah. is very proper and would refuse <laughs> to call him by the dog's name. And so he, he is he's either Junior or Henry or Henry. Yeah. You know, that's what your name is. Your name isn't Indiana. <clears throat> but then when he says Indiana, he's now using the name that 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 Indy goes by mm-hmm. that he's chosen for himself, the light that he lives. And it's showing that his dad now respects him enough and loves him enough to call him by his name. Or maybe he's doing it on purpose because he knows that will wake Indy Adam, mm-hmm. you know, Indiana like, Smith, Indiana, Indiana Smith. And he's like, just let it go. And, you know, he, I think, I think, you know, Indiana, he, he found illumination, you know, he, he realizes what's important and that's his son. That's a, uh, that's Henry's realization after almost losing him and everything. Mm-hmm. So I think that that's what happened. And then Indy, of course, you know, realizes why am I going for that? This is the only thing I ever really wanted yeah. Yeah. was for me and my, my father to be able to get on the same terms with right. something we love, archaeology yeah. or whatever. So then he gives him his other hand, pulls him up and they, they get out of there, you know, and that is the last crusade, the last we ever saw of Indiana Jones. Yeah. Um, and it's funny seeing <laughs> dot 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 ellipses. You see, you see Marcus uh, like you literally when he's riding off on the horse, like you see Marcus sideways. Yeah, like you're like that dude's almost falling off. Well, like, when obviously he, stunt man, <laughs> he went first, right? And yeah. then and then they all kind of looked two at him. new adventures, yeah, and they saw him like coming off his horse, <laughs> and they all kind of looked at each other. And Henry or Indiana goes first. He's like, I'll go, you know, kind of like I'll go get him. And so like you see him riding, and he gets closer and closer. He had, like the last thought, he lifts. Mark is back up, and then yeah. they all just ride off yeah. into the sunset. So, uh, what do you think of it? Oh, I love this movie. I give it four hundred whips. I give it four. I give it four there. grails for every limb that was cut off of the Black Knight and yes. Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Okay. Yeah. Four grails. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, stick with us, guys. We're uh, going to be doing Harry Potter, like we said, next month. Harry Potter! Uh, we are postponing Bar- uh, Back to the Future for now um, because we need a little bit of a break for some personal stuff. So we're going to take next we week off. Frightmare, bro. Yeah, we got Not Texas Frightmare. Texas Frightmare weekend uh, next weekend, or this coming weekend, um, depending on when you're listening to this. Um, but it is the... Uh, the weekend of what? The 29th, something like that? Something like that. Yeah. So this this weekend, we are going to Texas Frightmare Weekends. Our friends uh, from Horn Heels, Alicia and Jen, will be there as well, uh, which we'll make sure we'll try to take lots of pictures and post them on our social and everything. But if you're in the DFW area, our come soaps. on out. Our soaps. We'll be there. Horn Heels will be there. Um, Shutter Horror Group will be there. And uh, I'm sure many others. So. so anyways, we're going to take a break this weekend for that. And then uh, we'll be back next week for uh, uh, Sorcerer's Stone, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. And we'll be doing those for the rest of the year. The first week of every month, uh, we'll, we'll be trying to do those. Um, and we got a couple other things coming up, so stick with us. And a couple maybe very exciting things coming up. So. We're going to do the Twilight movies, and we're going to be seeing who is Team Edward and who is Team Jacob. 
Oh, secret. Uh, We're really Team Alice. Yeah, keep 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 an eye on our uh, social media. We'll do some more polls like that to yes. uh, quiz you guys. So. Yes. Uh, if you guys want to get a hold of us, we're on all social media at The Post Credit Podcast. Except for Twitter, we're at The Post Credit. Our email address is thepostcreditpodcast at gmail.com. We have a website. It's www.thepostcreditpodcast.com, and we're on YouTube. Uh, we appreciate you guys listening, and we'll see you next time. And throw me a big rock. Thank you.